Okay, hi everyone. Hello. Let's probably wait for another minute or so and then start. Should we start or are we waiting for someone? Yeah, I was waiting for Ricardo. Let's start. I guess let's give him a minute then. Should we go ahead with like intros or something like uh, I can get started. So uh, I'm Rajas. I work at VMware. I'm a Kubernetes contributor, mostly in the SIG testing and networking areas. Um, and of late, I've been trying to get more and more involved in tag runtime. Uh, I'm also involved in the Wasm working group uh, under tag runtime and helping out with uh, this working group as well. So yeah, that's about it.
Maybe I can next. jump in next. Uh, um, hey everyone, I'm Sean McGinnis. I work for AWS. I'm an engineer on the Bio Rocket project. Um, yeah, and and just uh, I've been interested in this for a while. Just I think it'd be there's enough um, similar but different uh, specialized OS distros out there, and and I think it'd be great just to have a place for us to collaborate where it makes sense, um, share ideas, and, and just have a place for people looking to use uh, specialized distros to kind of have some like white papers, know where to talk to reach projects, those kinds of things. So glad we're getting this conversation going. Um, I, I can go next. Uh, hey everyone, my name is Priyanka Sagu. Um, I work at SUSA as a Kubernetes integration engineer in the BCL group, Business Critical Linux group. Um, I'm also interested in learning more around uh, what's what's uh, being discussed here around special purpose operating system. Um, I've recently joined SUSA, but uh, we already uh, have a few Linux operating system currently uh, there and have been in the past, which were specialized for um, maybe containers and Kubernetes and now data centers, et cetera. So um, I would like to contribute wherever I can uh, just to have the conversation going on. Right. Yeah, happy to be here. Uh, hello, my name is uh, Andrei Smirnov. I'm engineering lead on Talos Linux project. And yes, I think for, for a long time and experience doing integrating with Kubernetes and specifically the kubelet, I saw that in the document when we have to mock like system D and D bus interface just to get the graceful shutdown going while we have neither of that in the operating system itself. And um, on the other hand, right, getting something, some other interface into the kubelet will take some time, but I certainly want to see this conversation going and getting kubelet kind of more simple and interacting more with some well-defined APIs with the host operating system when possible. I think that would be really cool. I can go next. Um, hi, uh, I'm at uh, DJ Shinto. Um, I'm working at Spectro Cloud. Um, I'm head of open source and I'm created um, Kairos, um, which is um, um, meta distribution, um, which um, focuses on bringing Kairos at the edge. Um, so it's focused mostly on um, on prem, on bare metal, um, data center deployments. Um, and it tries to um, cover the life cycle management of the OS entirely in a very truly disagnostic fashion. Um, and happy to be here. Um, yeah, I can go next. So I'm on the CNCF DOC and I'm also involved in Tag Runtime. Uh, as a part of the CNCF DOC, I'm also helping Flatcar get into CNCF as an incubating project. Mm -hmm. So I've been working with them pretty closely. Um, and I think Sean and I talked about setting up this working group at Cuba in Amsterdam, and then here we are. So like really looking forward to get this set up and uh, yeah, like looking forward to it. All right, I think that just leaves me. I'm Andrew Reinhard. Um, I am the CTO at Sidera Labs, the company behind Talos Linux. Um, I'm excited to see this group. We've kind of envisioned a group like this for a long time. Um, and we have some ideas, so we're happy to share them and uh, hopefully we all can come to something that works for all of us. Welcome everyone. Uh, so I think we can get started. Um, we are almost like nine minutes uh, into the meeting. Uh, so yeah, the, the idea of this meeting is to um, get aligned on the charter for this working group so 
there have been like a lot of discussions going from KubeCon uh, on like the formation of this working group, like a collaborative place for like uh, multiple uh, projects which are in the container OS space collaborating, not only just on container OSs, but more broadly on the special purpose OS uh, field. Uh, so yeah, thanks Sean for posting the link in the chat. So this is where we have drafted like a like a, uh, a charter for this working group, mostly defining what should be the mission statement, the scope, non the goals, non goals, what should be the deliverables, and things like that. Uh, there are a couple of ways of going around it. Like maybe we can have like a five to seven minute silent read if folks want to catch up on the doc, and then we can add comments to the doc or suggestions or make edits to the doc itself and then uh, go through the comments and suggestions or if folks have already gone through the doc before we can uh, like start right away what would you prefer um i'll just i don't have a, an opinion on that necessarily i just want to say that um i do have a hard stop in about uh 15 ish minutes or so so um I, whatever we can get done in that amount of time i'd love to be a part of maybe is there anyone that hasn't had a chance to read through the document yet so maybe, maybe we could just go right to discussion sounds good then. Yeah. uh I'll probably share my screen. So just going through the comments over here, uh, I think Sean, you had a comment on uh, like adding another point or an area around um aligning with softwares with like other companies or IT teams would adhere to right go ahead yeah um I was just trying to think of a scope of things that would be interesting to cover and I know that's one thing that's come up for us a few times is um people coming from a more general purpose Linux distro kind of having expectation in their mind of how certain things are done or how you handle certain things that doesn't fit with the the model of a specialized distribution so um, i'd imagine that's probably a common thing for a lot of us i know andre talking about um having to step out system d and things that you know there's definitely unique uh differences that we it, it could be useful i think for this group just to kind of rather than us each individually you know kind of explaining to our users of, of either why they shouldn't care about this when using our distro or, or something just if we had a, a common space that we could point to and, and you know if, if we have common things and then we could point users and say uh, yeah and you know here here's a great reference for you to take a look at some of the material that's come out of this working group that that discusses this better than you know, random comments and GitHub issues. <laughs> so just just an idea. Yeah, this sounds great. Uh, so probably if everyone agrees on this, like a probable AI would be to add this as another area to the scope, right? Uh, are there any comments, concerns on that? I'm just uh, apart from this, I don't see any other comments, uh, particularly on the scope, but maybe we can just uh, iterate over it and see if we at least align on the mission statement of this working group and the scope. Uh, are there any 
concerns, comments with the current version that we have for the mission statement of this working group? Um, just to kind of break that awkward silence, I had a question around, uh, so what are some of the topics that you'd be looking to discuss in the first few meetings? And we can kind of brainstorm through some of those and just map it back to the scope and deliverables. I think that would be helpful. Uh, so especially the folks who are representing the distros here, like what are topics that you'd like to discuss specifically? Sorry, you're uh, you're asking what topics we would like to discuss. I think maybe also. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, I mean, I know, and I'm. I don't know if I'm speaking for Andre necessarily, but I I think I could speak for us both in that. Um, Andre gave a great example. Topics of like, uh, there was, and and it's a fair it's a fair opinionated decision to be made by the Kublet, but when they made the decision to use system D you know, debus or whatever for whatever functionality that pretty much excluded us immediately. And we had to come up with a hack around that. And so I think a big thing that's important for us is um, how the Kublet interacts with the distribution. So another big concern is that there's a, actually a, a, a large portion of the Kublet code, which like exec out and runs like shell commands and stuff like that when it could be perfectly well written and go um, and this requires a much bigger image for us to maintain and the kublet image in, a, in an ideal world the kublet can be completely self-contained and or as as self-contained as possible and we could um we could just deploy that binary instead of having to package you know a multi hundred megabyte container around it <laughs> Um, so that's a that's a big thing for us, I think. Andre, does that cover things from our side? Do you think? Yeah, I think that's pretty fair. I mean, like in general, I would say, what is the interface that the host operating system provides to the kubelet? Because kubelet yeah. seems to be centered around like in a concept that there is a system D running which might be a fair assumption for many operating systems out there, but not for everyone, right? And certainly I don't want to see Kubelet have support for five different interfaces, but rather like a single interface that would work. And if we could expand that further and say that there is some kind of a standard interface that the operating system provides to the Kubelet, and for example, there is a system D implementation of that and implementation for, I don't know, any other unit system and so on. I don't know whether that makes sense, but something like that might be interesting. Yeah, another way of putting it is there's there's a container network interface, there's a container storage interface, but there is no interface between the operating system. And the kubelet. Um, and so we have some ideas on let's provide an interface for even the operating system itself and agreed upon rule set, schema, whatever. So that's a that's a topic we would love to chat about. Is developing that a deliverable? Can can developing that be a deliverable for this working group? Uh, yeah, I, I think it could be. Um, we've we've got a jump start on this. By all means, we're willing to throw everything away and reimagine it with you folks here. But um, I think I would love to see this group, you know, being represented by so many different distros, come to an agreement on what that spec is, at least. Um, and we we're all, you know, we could decide to implement it or not in our relative distros.
you know, just add my support to that, that it, it, it hasn't been a major issue for us, but I think that's a really interesting idea. And I, I even if nothing gets delivered, um, having those discussions and figuring out what that would look like would probably be time well spent. Another thing, I'm just kind of thinking out loud here. Um, so working with Flatbar for bringing them into the CNCF uh, was a little bumpy initially because we don't really have container OSs in the CNCF landscape right now. And then some folks had strong opinions about it. I think it's mostly died down. But once the proposals for flat car actually is like in public comment and then people start looking at it and expect it kind of to come up. Um, I'm not really sure where this working group can help with that, but is there anything around, I don't know, like tying into the CNCF landscape that you, you all can? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a plus one for that because very early on, about three years ago, we tried to propose Talos being accepted into the CNCF, and uh, this was when Dan was around, and it was it was very clear that operating systems haven't even been thought of as part of like a, being considered for the CNCF. Um, so if this group could advocate towards that, at least, um, I think that, that could be, you know, at least, you know, that could be, there's, there's, I mean, we don't need to add the, uh, to the CNCF poster anymore. I mean, that thing is crazy, but there could be a whole thing under, you know, Linux distributions for it that I, I think we could all be happy to live under. That's good. I'm not entirely sure how to phrase this in the charter and we could probably work on that offline, um, but that is definitely one thing I'd love to see this working group do. That kind of ties into something I was thinking, uh, as mentioned here, doing white papers. And I, I think we still have, I still come across a lot of people where this is kind of a brand new concept of, of not just, you know, just deploying any old Linux distro, but actually having something specialized. Um, I was thinking as a, maybe an early topic, what a kind of an introductory white paper uh, could be uh, explaining what is a special purpose operating system in the context of the cloud native space and, you know, just what, what does that look like? What is, what are things users should consider when they're choosing one of those? Um, and then that could kind of, I, I'm hoping that would be um, uh, kind of the a side output, I guess, of that would be uh, coming across other topics of, a, as we try to explain this in a way to, to someone new, what other, what are these other areas where it might be interesting to dive deeper and explore of um, things that would be useful for this group to work on? I would agree with that. I like it. Um, so the Edge Working Group came up with two white papers. One of them is ongoing. So the first one is about, like I think they call it Edge Native Application Principles. So what is really Edge Native? So kind of the introductory core behavior, uh, the core part. And then now they're kind of talking about design behaviors for Edge Native. So I think a similar pattern would be great. Uh, I also know like the Batch Working Group is kind of working on a landscape of all the Batch scheduling tools available in the ecosystem today. So probably like a landscape quote unquote in this space could also be helpful. Um, so this is in the deliverables and I, uh, so I really want to talk about WASM. Uh, so this is listed in the deliverables and I wanted to check if any of you all have started exploring that space. I know the flat car folks are presenting a talk at WasmCon around this, uh, but I think it's still like kind of experimental for them as well right now. Or is it something that you are interested in? Let me also phrase it that way. 
Wasm in particular? Yeah. I wouldn't say it comes up for us, but I do think Wasm is interesting and that does sound fun to learn about and do. The idea has come up for us. It's, um, it's different enough that we haven't had the resources to go explore it, but I think it could be an interesting area. Similar for me, I we, we are not discussing WASM in PCL side of SUSA, but there is a lot of work going on in Rancher, uh, the elemental side, so something to explore. Uh, just kind of, sorry, was someone saying something? Uh, so I'm just kind of iterating on some of the other deliverables. Um, so the other one is collaboration for any contributions to upstream projects like the Linux kernel. I know, like, I've been working closely with Flatcar, so I know that Flatcar has been working on some contributions to the kernel as well. Um, are other distros in world, like are y'all in world? Is, do you think there are opportunities to collaborate and is this working group the right place for it? Or is there more that can be done here? Well, it uh, uh, seems like an area for possible collaboration. We, we, I think we've done little things in the past. Um, so I could see this being a good place where um, there probably are similar issues that we run into that uh, would be easier to get upstreamed as a larger group than as individuals. Um, so. I don't have anything right now that uh, needs that, uh, but I could see it coming up and, and this being a good place to collaborate. Sounds good. Do we want to iterate on the other deliverables? especially if there are opinions around like contributing to the like, trust API or any opinions or comments around metrics and things like that. Cluster API is an interesting one for us. Um, Bottle Rocket's a, a little unique or different compared to a lot of other ones. Um, so we don't use cloud in it. Um, we did look at Adding support and cluster API, but uh, the feedback I got was ignition was added. Uh, some folks maybe weren't so happy about how some things were done, or, or just just how the how that impacted the project, um, and they were really looking for more of a, I guess, an abstraction, um, so that each time a, a specialized OS comes in with some unique way of initializing that it's not the same major effort to wire in yet another pathway uh, for initialization. Uh, so I know there's still interest in that, but it's kind of installed on having some time to be able to come up with some type of abstraction. Um, so personally, yeah, I would. Yeah. <laughs> I would second that um, we had to write our own bootstrap provider, control point provider, all these things because of there was a there were assumptions made uh, again in the same way that the Kubelet made assumptions, fair assumptions. Um, but again, um, you know, as Sean is saying, I think we could have a standard and an abstraction, an agreed upon way of doing these things because um, we're. To be to be fair, we're we're kind of getting away from cluster API more, um, and I think actually this is a good example of why uh, cluster API has made some opinionated choices. But if they were to make it easier for us to get back into it um, and not have to write a 
bootstrap provider and all these things that would be, we would gladly, I think, uh, be a part of that community more. But as it stands now, we're starting to not because of the opinions made. Um, I think I've covered this in the scope, but then uh, should this also be a deliverable or to give some guidance on upgrade scenarios and like long-term support uh, for different distros or in, in general for uh, special purpose OS? I know flat car folks aren't here, but at least I can probably speak for them. So they do support LTS. Um, and that has been a good uh, thing to call out during in the incubation proposal for us. So if that is something that other industries care about, it might be definitely a good idea to talk about. I, I do know they, uh, in Amsterdam there were uh, there's a lot of discussion on long term support for Kubernetes just generally. Uh, I think this group could again be another good voice into those types of discussions of what what are we looking for if the Kubernetes project does decide to support. LTS releases and you know, how how would that impact us or, or what kind of um, what kind of things are we seeing with the way we handle things that might be good input into that decision making process. Um, I just want to add a um, little here, um, long-term support for specifically containerized or uh, container operating system is a bit tricky um, because um, the containers that we provide, for example, Kubernetes and things get obsolete or out of support very quickly. And when we talk about operating system support for it, in talking about SUSE specifically, open SUSE, we we provide support through service packs. And, and when, when you talk about long-term support through service pack, that means we are going to be supporting them for like eight years or something like that. And long-term support in that time frame uh, usually is very tricky. We do support them in micro OS, the SLE enterprise operating system, but it is tricky. And, and there is some discussion going on, maybe, maybe to, maybe to, lower it down with rolling releases or something like that. But yeah, uh, any guidance on this from this working group would be helpful how other people are doing it in other operating system spaces, yeah. I mean, uh, specifically for Kubernetes, it's hard to even uh, provide Kubernetes uh, in enterprise operating system just because of this very reason that uh, the releases goes out of support very quickly and uh, you can't promise support for that long uh, LTS timeframe. So yeah, I, I, I plus one uh, what Sean said, if we can uh, provide some maybe, maybe feedback to what that discussion going in in the Kubernetes space on uh, LTS, the working group that also came out of uh, KubeCon Amsterdam discussion. So that could be one thing we can do as part of this group. Sounds good. So that would be, so this would potentially be a deliverable for this working group to uh, basically address uh, the impact of Kubernetes ideas on container OSs in general. Uh, is that right? 
um i would say just discussing lts in general and then kubernetes can be one of those examples maybe because there are a lot of uh, others like go and stuff that can also come in the picture yeah. most programming language containers yeah i'm hearing a potential white paper idea um uh, thank you for that um uh, moving on and uh i think i think going back to the wasm aspect so this came up in the wasm working group meeting uh particularly on how uh so there's there are projects like k wasm which are like kubernetes operators to run wasm workloads and there is some guidance from other version one time like run version and things like that on what should be the uh, base OS where the version workload should be run particular Kubernetes node. But then there is no standard way because of file system issues. And uh, from a WASM perspective, it should be just a binary that should run on any platform independent of the file system choice, but there is no standard way defined for that. And there's work happening in the WASM working group around uh, defining OCI artifacts for WASM workloads and things like that. I think this is another potential area for collaboration between this working group and the WASM working group uh, to define a standard for running WASM workloads on special purpose OSs, I guess. What is that sort of people? I will just I don't know. Okay. Um are there any other uh, deliverables or items that we should add to the scope or things should be taken out from the deliverables should be added to the deliverables? Are there any other opinions on that? I think uh, we should probably have one more follow-up meeting uh, with flat card folks involved as well so that we can uh, like organize. Well, we can also just do this a thing if possible, I think just in the interest of time. That's good. Oh, so the, the, the goal is to have a first draft ready so that we can at least put it out in the public channel and get more feedback. But before we do that, we need to at least align on these deliverables and scopes. So, so Nikita, what you're saying is like, we'll do this async sync up with flat car people and then uh, go out of the public channel. Sounds good. Does it sound okay? Cool. Um, if there are no other concerns or comments on the deliverables of scope, I think we're good. Uh, one last thing that I wanted to highlight was around like if anyone's interested in being the chair or uh, and technical lead for this working group, then please reach out to me or Ricardo. Like maybe send out a blurb on like why you should be the chair or the work tech, tech lead and then uh, we can take it forward from there. So that's another thing I wanted to bring up. Uh, uh, yeah. One ask, can you post a note about the chair and technical leads part in the group DM that we have just so that the other folks are missed? Thanks. Yeah. Sounds good. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is try to resolve these comments in terms of adding these deliverables that we've discussed in the meeting and then send out an update in the group DM that we have and also put out the blog. Uh, sounds good. Any other comments, concerns, feedback before we end the meeting? Um, just a comment on one of the uh, deliverables we were discussing around CAPI. Um, so there is some work going on uh, there is a draft out for in-place uh, updates, and that is interest 
uh, that is of some interest in this uh, special purpose operating system space. So if anybody is interested, uh, maybe they can put uh, input there. Yeah. I've added the link to uh, the thread Rajas you started on the copy a little bit. Sounds good, thanks for adding that. Uh, we're good then. Uh, thank you everyone for joining and uh, attending this working meeting for Special Purpose OS Charter. I uh, really appreciate your time. I think we can get back like 20 minutes back. So yeah, thank you. See you around. Thanks, Bye. Thanks, Bye. 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 Bye.